Pilo and the band arrive in LA. Though they've left a trail of new fans in every city they've played in the East Coast, California is a whole new challenge. And they're almost starting from scratch. Morning Becomes Eclectic at KCRW. That was Nika Costa recorded live in our studios a couple of years back. But they've scored another coup. Nick Harcourt is one of the most influential figures on in the US music scene. A sort of American John Peel. This is the Angelique Key Joe Peter Gabriel song. He's credited with launching the likes of Coldplay, Franz Ferdinand and Travis in the States. And Paolo is fortunate to have a slot on his radio show. The whole thing about any British artist coming out here is that they have to, they've got to work, they've got to travel. You know, whether that's gigging and being on the road for a couple of months or whether it's just, you know, visiting radio stations and doing all the press. It's a big country. It's not like in, in Britain where you can go out and do something during the day and come home and sleep in your own bed at night. It's, you know, it takes a commitment of time. Now, I produce the show. I'm not going to shake your hand because I have a cold. Oh? Yeah. Just, just snort. How about that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you in a minute. Because of the nature of the way it is, Paulo gets stuck carrying a big load on his back every day. But I think the guys in the band have been tremendous troopers, and I think they totally have Paulo's back, and they're there basically with him every step of the way that they can, and they try to take as much off his plate as possible whenever they can. And they, they've done everything that we've asked, and done it with a, with a smile, really. I met Jim, my drummer, when I was 15. He was in a band, Speedway, and I would go on tour with them, sort of support, and I was just sort of learning and doing whatever I could. How mad is that? He's such a good, great guy to have, you know, on your side. He's just, he's, he's just like a, a good mate. Donny, the guitarist, and he's Patrick Swayze. He's a crazy character, you know, he's very calm and very controlled and then he'll, he'll just sort of... Um, In the bar for six hours. ...have his moments as well. Really pissed. I don't know whether it's too much vodka or... Fuck off. It's just adrenaline from his, his daily run. <laughs> I don't know. Last but not least, we've got Bestie, George Best, Mick McDade. It's the noise. It's the incessant banging of the drums that gets me. A wicked musician again, all round. Very, you know, a creative guy, and just, and he just seems to have, you know, he has a lot of time for, you know, for everybody. He always tries to maintain a positive outlook. No pooping in there. You've been warned. I am not going to go for a poop. I am simply going for a slash. <laughs> Singing was just something you could just walk around and do. I never, I never ever thought I want to be a star of the stage. You know, I just wanted to sing along with songs. And then I just when I see my grandfather singing, like he used to go to his house and he would sit. He had a piano and he would sing. He loved opera music and stuff. And he would get like the local one senior over and they'd play. He played boogie woogie piano and he was a boogie woogie priest. And uh, I just used to sing along. You know, that was this when I was like six. I loved the Corries when I was a wee boy, I loved the Corries, I loved uh, like the Drifters. The, all the old Motown and the Atlantic Soul stuff. I want to just grow into myself like most of my favourite people done. I'm just a teenager, you know, I'm just, well, I'm just a teenager. You're going to hear Nick in your headphones. He's going to be over there. I'm going to bring you in in a second to meet him. He's While encouraged by their progress so far, Paolo and the band are getting fatigued by playing the same songs day after day. They're anxious to get home and start working the crucial second album. It's a tricky dilemma. The longer they spend trying to crack America, the longer they delay writing and recording new material. I lost a wee bit of inspiration, you know, because I'm just so tired, you know, and I'm just... It's just got a bit manic, you know, so, you, you know, the way I was writing for the first album, I was writing because I couldn't ignore it, you know, so it was, it was therapeutic, writing it down. Now you've got so many things to think about that nothing seems to stick. And, uh, that's a bit of a worry, but, you know, I've, I've always got, I've got loads of half ideas, my half ideas coming, uh, I was about to say coming at Mars. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. 
my involvement in the music has been sort of writing songs, helping Paolo get songs together. We started sort of writing songs, you know, when he, when he was 15 and he, he came into the studio and one of them that, that's got a real memory for me is a song called Autumn. Autumn leaves and the frozen souls Hungry hands turning soft and old The tune basically started as, as this little piece of music I'd written on the guitar and he said, look, I'd like to take it away and just I've got an idea of something I want to write about my grandfather. And like these autumn leaves, I don't have nothing to hold. So he took it away and, and he came back and he sang it and like the hairs in the back of my neck were standing up and you know, <laughs> tears in the, in the eyes and stuff like that. It's just this, you know, great song about his grandfather and his grandfather's funeral and how his dad reacted to that and, and kind of how he remembers him and stuff like that. So it was really one of those special moments. Autumn leaves have faded now And that smile that I've lost Well, I've found somehow Cos you still live on in my father's eyes Autumn leaves, all these autumn leaves, all these autumn leaves are yours to me. Mm. Thank you. You saw him on Conan, you saw him on The Morning Show. Thank you so much for coming out. Please welcome Paolo Nutini. The three weeks of work so far has propelled these streets into the US charts and the single New Shoes is getting significant airplay. More and more people are turning up to Paolo's gigs. It's a great start, but given the overall size of the American market, it's still just a drop in the ocean. So far, so good. I think, uh, you know, we're off to a really good start. The reception's been great, all the press and radio. Everyone's been very warm and excited about the record. I think we're going to have a nice little run. I see rainbows, I just fly. We have to set the rainbows in the sky. The tour has thrown up a number of unplanned but morale-boosting encounters. In Boston, Paolo gets to meet a musical legend and fellow Scottish football fanatic. Both have gigs tonight, but with some minor rescheduling, they're able to find time after their sound checks to catch up. It's a chance for Paolo to get some advice and see what touring is like in the big league. He is the most English Scotsman I've met, but Scotsman nevertheless. He's a man after my own heart, there he is. Just in time, he's just about to start something up. Let's go and do it. How you do? Because we're going to open the gate. We're going to go on, on stage. Uh, right. to I know. I, I see. What way on the chart? It was my uh, publicist phoned me up, and she said, "Well, you've got to listen to this guy, Paolo." That same day, I think I heard new shoes on the radio. We're going to make it right here, guys. Right down here, please, Paolo. <laughs> guys. It's better to be in a mad rush than not. I think the only similarity between me and Paolo is we're both Celtic supporters. I think. Uh, He's his own man, you know, he's, I don't think we sound anything like at all, you know, we're both good looking. Um, <laughs> but he's, uh, he's got his own sound, a very distinct voice, which I think is so important. So you like this? Oh, can we? Yeah, upstairs. <laughs> Played in the round before, it's a lot of hard work, because you're constantly just like this. The mm. thing is, once we've got the four cameras up here, they put me up on the screen, so I'm always facing the audience on the screens. And it's still a lot of work. 